My style is kind of a cartoony slash comic book style, and so I use Adobe Illustrator a lot because it creates such crisp and clean line work for my cartoons. So that's what I'm talking about today, is I'm sharing a couple of my favorite quick and dirty tips and tricks for Adobe Illustrator. The first thing that I want to talk about is where do I start? Well, I like to start by grabbing a sketch, whether it's drawn in my sketchbook or Photoshop, and I just like to paste it into Illustrator. I can import that in, I can paste it in, you know, whatever works best for you. Now, usually what I do after I get it in here is I just start drawing. I'm going to start drawing all of my lines and I usually use the pen tool or maybe I'll sketch above it if I have a drawing tablet or something. But what you're going to see is happening here is that as I draw my my lines or my shapes over what I have as a sketch is I can't actually see my sketch anymore. I'm just going to do this quickly. So how, how do I fix that? I want to be able to see all of those details as I sketch. Well, one way to do it would be to move this to an upper layer. So I'm going to command X and then in my layers on the right hand side, I'm going to create a new layer, which is now my green colored layer, my layer three in this case, I'm going to paste it back in and now it's over that. Now I can't see through that so one way to do it is to go to your transparency palette I have it docked here you could always go to windows and then go down to transparency to find that and then I could set that down to say 10% or 20% till I can see it the problem is is I can't see the lines underneath it well I can see them but they they're not as intense because you have the faded white above it there is a way around this, and if we go back to this transparency palette where you see it says normal, go ahead, select your image, and then where it says normal, click that, and then you want to go to this. It is called multiply, and when I click on multiply, you can kind of see what happened there. Now, even if I turn the intensity of those lines back to 100, I can still see what's underneath. What multiply does is it lets all of the whites and lighter shades of gray become transparent while the darker colors, the blacks and the darker grays, you can still see above it. So now I can lock that layer so I don't accidentally grab it and I can grab whatever layers are underneath and I can grab shapes, I can draw whatever I want underneath and it's going to be vibrant and it's going to look good. Now this next tip is actually starting in Photoshop. I know, I know, but this actually makes sense. Before, when we were in Illustrator, I had this nice sketch that was only black and white and didn't have other shades of gray to it. But as you can see here, if I use my phone to snap a little snapshot of the sketches that I made in my sketchbook, you can see that my sketchbook has a lot of, uh, you get the tan color of the page, you get some other stuff. We wanna knock all that out and all of that starts in Photoshop. So I'm gonna start by going to image and then I'm gonna go down to adjustment and I'm going to desaturate this. This is going to lose all of my colors. It's going to make it completely black and white. So first I desaturate and so now it's just a grayscale image. That didn't change it too much. So let's go back to image adjustment and now we want to go to curves. So when we pull up the curves, uh, what we can see here is this little peak here is going to show our blacks, down here is gonna show our whites. So if we pull up, we're gonna make our whites whiter. Actually, that made our darks darker. It's the top that makes our lights lighter, so let's pull that back. But what we wanna do is we wanna find that good spot. Uh, you can see underneath here what is happening. As I adjust the curves and as I pull this forward, uh, I'm losing more of that extra stuff. So just kind of find that space where it's losing that back end of the paper, that grayscale, uh, and you can kind of adjust these as needed. So now when I click OK, I can zoom in and uh, maybe I find the icon that I want to trace, maybe this nice little castle here. And as you can see, the only thing we really have left are the darker outlines and we've completely knocked out that paper color behind it. I wanna talk a little bit about adding a thicker outline around my character. Now what I've done here is I have a bunch of shapes. This guy is made up of those shapes, which I can obviously move around and whatnot. But what I like to do oftentimes is have a nice, thick outline around my character. And sometimes with shapes, that can be really hard to do because I want my inside lines to stay small and thin, but my outside shapes to be thick. Well, usually what I do is I draw the character all as one weight, and then I like to duplicate the entire character. 
Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this duplication and I am going to make it one solid shape. In order to do that, I need to use my Pathfinder tools. Now, I have my Pathfinder palette open right here on my right-hand side because I use it all the time, but if you need it, you go up to Windows and you go down to here, Pathfinder, you can open it up yourself. Now, Pathfinder does some really cool things and I don't want to go into them all right now, but the number one thing I want to do is I want to unite every single shape that I have here into one shape. So I'm gonna click Unite, and now this is just one shape. And from here, I'm gonna turn up the opacity a little bit, and I'm going to make that the outline. Uh, now you see the outline is really thin, but what I can do is I can go down here to Stroke, my Stroke palette, which again, if you go up to here to Windows and go down to Stroke, you can open that up yourself. And maybe I knock this way up to, I'm gonna make it 10 just to make it really noticeable. And I'm gonna give it an inside color as well, maybe a, a pink, just so I know it's an inside color. Now when it does that, when you merge shapes, sometimes you get some weird jaggies. So that's very easy to fix. I just like to zoom in on that area I highlight it with my uh, little white arrow and then I come in here and I find out what points on my uh, little stroke there are doing that and I just kind of I kind of knock those out really quickly here's another one it's when it's really a really small stroke you don't notice it when it's a really big stroke you notice it so now you have this very thick outline we can move it on top of this character which is going to be pink but when we uh, select it right click on it, say arrange and send it to the back. What have we done? We've just put a nice thick outline around our characters but kept all of those thin outlines on the inside. Now what about those jaggies? I mentioned that before but sometimes the jaggies just kind of happened naturally. We can see it in this shape here. Uh, I have this line coming up and it's meeting at the same exact point as this other line but what ends up happening? We get this huge overlap on the side and even when we zoom out we can see that we don't have a nice clean shape here. There is an easy way to get rid of these and I'm gonna show you here. So I take my white arrow tool, I select it, and then I can just go in here and grab the point I'm looking for. Now what happens when you grab that point? We get a little rounded corner tool. Now you might want be thinking, I don't want a rounded corner, but that's okay, just pull it out for now. And you can see we still have some overlap. By default, when you use that rounded corner tool, it pulls it in quite a bit. You can still pull it pretty far out and when you let go, there you go. You have pretty close to a flush line. If you zoom way in, you can see a little bit of a divot, which is hard to get rid of. But as you zoom out, it looks really clean. No one's going to notice that. So I'll go to the other side here, and I will zoom in on this guy and do the same thing. I'll highlight that. I will grab that little corner again. There we go. I grab this little dot in the corner, which gives me my rounded corners, and then I pull it out, and you could tell at a certain point it snaps. I wanna get it to close to that snapping point without actually snapping, and when I let go, I've got a nice rounded corner, and now I have the shape that I'm going for. There's something else about this shape that I don't like. I'm gonna scroll down here, and what I have is uh, a separate shape right here, a separate line right here, and I want it to connect with that. It looks like they're pretty darn close to each other. How do I fix that? Well, I can join these two paths. And what I have to do is I have to select them with one of my arrow tools. I go up to here, object, then I scroll on down to path. And there's an option right here called join, and when I select that, I have now joined those paths together, and when I select it, that is all one shape. And I'm going to uh, zoom in over to this side, highlight those object, down to path, down to join, and there we go. We've lost that little divot that was taken out here, and we've gotten rid of our little jaggy. We have a much cleaner little box here. I talked about adding thick lines to this refrigerator fellow, but how can I do nice variable width lines? What if I have these little lines here, which are the same width all the way across? What if I want to vary that width a little bit? One thing we could do is we could make a custom art brush. So to start with this, let's go up here to window, and then we're gonna go down to brushes, or you could just hit F5. I'm gonna open that up and it opens up my brush palette here. So now I'm going to draw a custom brush and I can really use any 
shape to do that, I'm gonna just start with a basic square. I'm just gonna make it solid black without an outline of any kind. And I'm gonna make a bow down in the middle so that when I turn it into a brush, it kind of flares out at the end. So I'm gonna add some points in the middle. I don't really worry about these being uh, perfect or anything. And then I add this, which kind of is, it's gonna help me arc. So I, I add that little arc in and then I move that to the middle to create that bow shape. Do that again on the other side. Let me grab the shape tool there. There we go. And then I can move that point in. And now we've got a really nice bow going on. It's probably a little more exaggerated than what I need for, uh, for my brush. But there we go, I'll, I'll shrink it down. So now I wanna take this shape and I wanna turn it into a brush. I highlight it. On my brush window that I open my brush palette, I create a new brush. There's an icon along the bottom of that palette. I go over here and I'm going to be creating an art brush. So I select art brush, I click OK, and then a bunch of options come up for me. I want to make sure that uh, if this brush is going up and down, it's gonna make it really long. Don't want that. Uh, the last thing I used was this left to right. That is perfect for what I am doing here. So I click OK. Now, any line that I click on my character, you can see this brush, Art Brush 1, uh, you can name it whatever you want, is in here. If I click on that, what's just happened? I've made a variable with brush. Now it's, it's pretty thick, so I can always come in here to my width and change it to something smaller. And you can see here, I might make it a little bit bigger so you can see it a little better for the sake of this, 0.5. You can see it is narrower in the middle and it kind of flares out at the top. So you can create these variable width images or these variable width strokes, which I think adds a little bit more personality to your characters. What if you're going for a more nudgy hand-drawn feel? You can do that too. Any stroke on here can be uh, created into a shape just by selecting that stroke, going up to object, down to path, and there's an option here called outline stroke. And what this is going to do is it's going to take any of these lines and it's going to turn them into paths, into shapes. So I outline that stroke and you can see here, it has added a lot of dots, but now I can go in here and I could find the dot that is doing this, sometimes it takes some time because it, there's a, there are a lot of dots, but there we go. And I can go in here and I can clean it up. Or if I think it's getting too narrow in spots, I can go in here and I can make it wider. So you can definitely come in here and uh, make your strokes and just clean these things up after you've put them on there to make it cleaner. One thing I would recommend is maybe duplicating your strokes before you actually break them down because they are a little bit harder harder to edit. Another problem that you might run into once you get your strokes outlined and you want to edit them a little bit is that it adds a lot of points to your strokes. Well, there is a way to clean that up and simplify your shapes as you go, which is gonna make them a little bit easier to edit. For example, if I wanna make this flare out more at the top, I've gotta to grab all of these points and drag them out one by one. That's a pain. I only wanna drag out a couple points at a time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the shape. I'm going to go to object again, and I'm going to go down to path. And there's an option here called simplify. So I go ahead and click that, and then it gives me this little dialog box, and I can choose how simple I want to make this stroke by dragging this up and down. I like to click this little preview box so I can see what's gonna happen. If you oversimplify, as you can see, it gets a little weird. So let's move that threshold up until it looks kind of the way we want it to look. Let's move it to 99, 98, 95. It's getting close. It depends on how much editing you want to do. 95 is probably going to be pretty good for us. It's dramatically removed the number of points. Uh, if I want to at this point, sometimes I just come in here and say, you know what, I don't need these. So I, I manually start getting rid of those points. But that way you can control the shape a little bit and it makes it easier to edit it as well. Next up, I wanna mention the Paint Bucket Tool, the live paint tool for quick comic coloring. Now there is an entire technique to this and it takes me about five to 10 minutes to explain and I've already made a video on this. So if you wanna see the fastest way that I know how to color in Adobe Illustrator, there's a separate video for that and I'm linking it uh, up above and also down below in the description. That's a kind of a cool technique 
technique, but it also destroys your artwork. So make sure you duplicate your artwork before you start painting using that technique. Hey, if you found that useful, throw me a like down below so other people can find this video too. And if you have any comments or questions, let me know down below in the description as well. Also, I'd like to point out that I have an Adobe Illustrator course over on Udemy, link down below, where I go through the basics of Adobe Illustrator while teaching a zombie how to use the program. I know it sounds a little goofy, but it's kind of fun and an interesting way to learn Adobe Illustrator. It's very project-based, so I'm not just kind of showing the tools. We're actually walking through some art and illustration project so you might pick up a little bit of technique along the way. That's all I've got. I'll see you guys in a couple of days.